Hello, everyone. Welcome to Game Junk Prototype, episode 31, recording on Friday, October 2nd. My name is Frank. My name is Sean. And my name is Andrew. And a bit of a light week here. So everyone's talking console wars. We've been discussing numerous debacles relating to an upcoming console war. And we're not talking about console wars, the movie, although we may in the future. I did watch it as I believe Sean did, but we're not talking about it today. We're going to get into our favorite consoles of all time, specifically our top five consoles of all time. Got to get these top five lists out. People are creaming for the lists. <laughs> we're juicing this episode completely. Uh, let's just get into it. Fuck it. Uh um, well, do we want to start with a little sprinkling of the news that we were going to touch on or leave that for No, later? news is after. We're getting right into the console okay. war. And should, I'm just going to say, first of all, we did, this was asked of a few people over the history of Game Junk. We've covered it before. And it recently came up again, people asking for our, our top five consoles or favorite consoles. So we can't remember exactly who sent it in. We looked for it. We couldn't find it. We apologize Thanks for the suggestion, although it's been covered before, but we've had a whole another generation of consoles and we got to see where they fit in. Well, also, I think the original question was for us to rank all the consoles of Ooh, all yeah, time was, or something like that, right. which yeah, would have been crazy. That's not going to happen. <laughs> yeah. So we'll just do top five, which I think will be fun. Now, that could be why I, I couldn't find it either because I was looking for top five, but you're right. It wasn't top five. Oh, was okay. Well, there we go. It was a mm -hmm. ranking. We will be ranking, but only five. Now, uh, one little disclaimer, too, going into this. Got to say, I mean, I don't know how you guys did well, your lists. Yeah, I mean, but like, how I do all my lists, my favorite five consoles, not the best. Some objective reasoning, like you guys do your movie list, where it's clearly not your favorite movies. We're talking about our favorite consoles. Agreed, Sean? I, I did a little bit of both, as I usually do. It was definitely favorites but I, I tried to have some justification for why they're on the list as well this but amazing the one thing that makes it very subjective though <laughs> is that it, it depends on what consoles i've owned over the years like not if i didn't own the console it's not on the list i'll tell you right now so and that's my exact reasoning when we do our movie lists because i haven't seen every movie ever how could I rank everything in terms of movies when I've only seen a subset, and in my case, a more limited subset than yours? So I'm glad to see you actually agree with me, even though you can <laughs> do it directly. And I mean, so, you missed the whole pre-show thing. Sean just won't agree with me. On <laughs> I was well, pointing out the new Witches poster for the Robert Zemeckis movie looks like a poor Tim Burton movie equivalent poster and he just would not budge. Just looking would for another excuse to rewatch Dark like, uh, Shadows. We know how it The goes. original Witcher's poster, Witcher's poster uh, looks a lot like a Tim Burton poster. I'm like, what? I'm like, does it? Anyway, it's a story for another time. <laughs> Let's move the debate into top so, five consoles. What, one more thing though. Now, I didn't put any handhelds on. What's your opinion on this, Frank? Because I, I would believe... have included them if I thought they were one of the best consoles. I can tell you that. Okay. All right. But I did. Okay. Handhelds Spoiler. were definitely under consideration for me. No computers, though. So no Commodore 64. I'm playing fair here. <laughs> okay. Obviously, no one's get, like no one's going to pull a PC Master Race number one, right? <laughs> that, that is not I am, allowed. I am not. I'm definitely not. But... These are, you know, shipped two homes, purchasable in store, all one thing. Uh, so you're saying I could have put my is, computer on there. Polymega is component based, can't get into it. We should actually talk Polymega. Forgot to bring that up, but uh, we'll get into that in news. Jay's chomping at the bit out there. Uh, all right, let's get into it. Polymega, just for the record, any consoles we haven't played yet do not qualify. Even if, uh, certain video game websites have them in their hands and are giving their uh, preliminary feedback for one console and not the other is mm -hmm. totally unrelated. We, we don't have anything in our hands, no speculation stuff we've played. We're not Speak getting paid by any other companies to promote certain consoles over other ones. These are just our favorite consoles of all time. 
Speak for yourself, bud. I got a little payola. Oh, you got to share the wealth, bud. <laughs> anyway, let's get into it. Who wants to go first? Console number five. Huck City. Nobody. I'm okay. going to Huck. Huck, you're in first. Uh, all right. Uh, I had to knock one off that I was really sad about, but we'll, we'll come back to that. But I, my number five is going to be the N64. And so I didn't talk about it at the start, but when I was ranking, I was ranking not only games, but how it sort of like changed the industry and what it brought to the industry. So I think, so my, my N64 feeling is not only like your typical first party Nintendo games that are awesome, your Mario 64, your Mario Kart, Mario Golf, Mario Tennis, all that stuff, but also the multiplayer aspect of the Nintendo 64 really was life-changing. Like Wave Race, GoldenEye, well, Mario Kart, all those four-player games hit right at the time when I was playing, you know, multiplayer games in my house with four other people. I was busting out some crazy cardboard contraption to make sure you could only see one side of the GoldenEye screen, no radar, <laughs> so there was no cheating craziness. I want to see how that worked. Oh, it was... It was a contraption. It was amazing. Uh, you know, the big CRT, Love and Life. And, you know, there's just so many games like that that, uh, that were on the N64 that I never really had experience. I know the Super Nintendo had, like, the multi-tab, but how many people had a multi-tab? Not many. I know Genesis had its little, like, plug-in four-person adapter, but uh, that kept popping out on me every time I tried to use it. It was basically useless. So I thought N64 was really the first one that kind of kicked off multiplayer. Also, it was the first one to really nail 3D control games. It also brought the analog stick, which we'd never seen before. I mean, I guess like Commodore 64 technically had a joystick like an analog stick, but nothing on oh, consoles. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and yeah, just like, uh, let's see what other games. Blast Corp, Zelda, Diddy Kong Racing. I forgot to mention that. Banjo, the Banjo games, Star Fox 64. Shadows of the Empire, Wave Race, like just some great, great games. Now, I don't think the library was as deep and obviously it didn't have any real RPGs to speak of. But overall, I think the multiplayer and the, you know, the leap to 3D uh, was enough to hit on my list. Yeah, I'll, I'll say just real quick. I mean, N64 is not on my list. I find that this generation is a tough one for me because you can't a lot of these games are really tough to go back and play now you know like the the retro 8-bit 16-bit some of them are, are still pretty playable and fun but a lot of those early 3d games are just so rough to go back to so that's kind of a factor for me and also this was just this point in my life i, I was actually at my lowest point of gaming when n64 came out i was just not that into video games at that point what a disaster yeah <laughs> i just want to confirm uh which i'm pretty sure i'm right but i got to give credit where credit is due uh the first analog controller was not the n64 uh oh it was the sega saturn uh which really? did not ship for the, the console N64? but did ship with a version of nights into dreams and i'm sure someone will correct me uh, and there's probably another one that I'm not aware of as well. But, you know, if we're going to be giving all these props to Nintendo, I mean, we all well, watch Console Wars. Well, since we since no one bought a Sega Saturn, though, I uh, <laughs> should probably go to Nintendo. No, I, I mean, <laughs> not to say. Sega, we're What's innovators the, in a certain What sense. is the Sega time difference, though? Two months. What are we talking about? Two, three three months. months. Three months. Three months. You think Nintendo just like, you know what, I'm going to redesign the entire thing and go... I'm analog not saying stick. the games were better. All I'm saying is they had the first analog. And I got one upstairs if you want me to go. Get it. Uh, <laughs> yeah, go get it. Sega did a lot of things first. <laughs> they didn't necessarily do it best. Totally agree. And uh, I'm not going to do any. Oh, my God. Mentions. Look at this controller. It's a disaster. <laughs> hey, I'm, just, I'm not vouching for the controller. <laughs> Even, I mean, if anything... Nintendo actually set it up so that analog controls mattered and replaying Mario 64. It's a really interesting look at what they thought would be fun or unique about having analog controls. And now that I'm aware of that as a game designer, I see that way more in the game where when I was younger, I would just kind of blow through everything. Probably they were experimenting with it. Like 
in retrospect, it's not that much fun to walk slowly. Like you have to go up to the piranha plants and punch them or balance over stuff slowly. And they probably thought it was cool that you could do that with an analog controller, but in reality, it fucking sucks. Like it's boring. Um, but you got <laughs> well, hang on, hang on. The N sixty four for like basically thinking of all, not only analog sticks but the right analog stick with camera controls. Like they already thought mm. out that those yellow buttons should be used for rotating and adjusting the camera, which eventually got switched to a dual analog system. So. I, I, I got to push back a bit on the creeping along boxes and stuff like that adds a different level of fidelity to the animations. Like now you're not just doing standing, walking or running. You've got all the degrees of speed in there now that you can control with. So now you can, if you want to walk, you just push it halfway. You don't, you don't rip, right? I know what analog is. I'm just saying it's not that much fun. It's not that like, much fun. Okay. Well, to creep along behind something, but that's probably more because the camera controls are shit. Well, it could be a lot of things, but you know, there are good uses of those type of analog controls. I think Mario 64 was pushing them a lot more, but I think, you know, maybe it's not as much fun as you might think it is. It's cool though. Don't get me wrong. And it's extremely innovative. I don't know if anyone's actually found a great use for analog controls, like a game where I caught like, Let's be honest, even though you can walk slowly in video games, how often do we actually walk slowly and only push the analog stick up halfway? I'd say 2%. Sorry, I take that I, back. I remember games. 0.5% that... <laughs> of all video games I play, do I do that? And furthermore, I think Nintendo thought, well, we have to feature this technology, which I admit is interesting, but in practicality, how often do we actually use analog controls? I would say not very often at all, um, other than it's much Sports better for, art, for articulating direction. I would never argue that. You can get in between or on an angle much more, but using half motion or half pushes on analog sticks, almost useless. And Buddy, play FIFA. For triggers, you... it's very useful. Like I love like having half the subtle motions of triggers on racing games and stuff like that. Anyway, let's not go down this well too far. <laughs> let's let's <laughs> keep on this well. Let's keep on it because you've obviously not played FIFA in the last 25 years because, like, the amount of stuff they do with, like, the subtleness of the control stick and how they blend the animations, you could never get that on anything but an analog stick. Well, so you actually only run half speed in FIFA? No, like but you can do you can do subtle like leans to the right and stuff, and you're you're you know you're blending into it. You're, yeah, but you that's got, like, direction. You can simulate that with like with any input. If it's you don't need it's only any input. Yeah, keyboard it like that's what game. You think like, you Unity think WASD? That. You think WASD yes. is going to let you get the Unity final? simulates <laughs> like ramping up to analog like it simulates analog controls. That's what it does. It's just not. Uh, I'm kind of with Frank on the walk run thing. I remember spending a lot of time on a specific game that we worked on with our good buddy Dax, working on an animation system and putting all this time into like different pr precision for walk run and all this stuff. And I was like, why are we doing this? Everyone just runs. And as it was, the run was too slow anyway. So, <laughs> and I'll, I'll make another statement. I'd say, I said 0.5% of the time you're using an in between or non full and I'm not including ramping up to it. Right. I'm, like obviously at some point while you're ramping up, you're going to be in between on the motion or switching directions, but just in terms of what you want to do, how often you only press halfway. Secondly, I would say 90% of using halfway or non full analog input is done by game demos at E3 where they want to walk through their environment nice and slow and they show this stuff <laughs> off. It, it's really the only case that it's there for. You'll Let's walk get time. real. All right, fine. Good one, though. Uh, we love the N64. Can't believe it's not on Sean's list. Anyway. Well, I will, I'll say, too, I, I've owned pretty much all the Nintendo systems along the way. I have not owned some of the other ones some of the other big ones. So I tried not to lean too much into Nintendo stuff, but 
it's definitely going to be biased. Like the barrage of comments saying, I like only using my stick halfway. I do it all the time. I can't <laughs> wait to see it. Sure you <laughs> All right. Uh, my number five is uh, I'll kick it off with a handheld system. The PS Vita. Vita! Good choice. Beautiful OLED screen. I mean, the closest we've come to AAA experiences, and there oh, it is. Frank's got it right there. Just closest handy. we've come to AAA experiences on a handheld system, I mean, aside from, I guess, the Switch now, and I suppose your phone, <laughs> which everybody has, which is kind of the reason why the Vita died, I think. But uh, I just loved this thing. Like when this thing came out, so first of all, I actually did a little bit of development for it. So maybe I got a little bit of a soft spot because of that. Um, but um, when this came out, I was working in Toronto and I was taking the Go train in every day. And this thing was the best. Like I was playing tons of stuff on it all the time. And uh, I wish there was more. I wish the library was had you know was bigger. But they did a lot of crossplay stuff. Uh, so it was always nice when games came out on both Vita and PS3, and I still play it from time to time. So, so do I actually. And what I like about it is you can still get some of those like original PlayStation games on there, and they're really playable on that machine. And you could take them anywhere, and you know they don't cost you an arm and a leg. Like if Nintendo were to re-release some of them on their platform, which is nice. And uh, I, you know what. One of the best experience I had on a Vita, which is really not talked about, is uh, playing f one of the first FIFA games that came out. And it actually used the back touchpad to direct your shot at the net, which I thought was actually pretty revolutionary because that's one of the hardest things in sports games to get right is being able to move and shoot and aim at the net at the same time. It's really, really difficult. And the back touch actually made it possible, which I, I thought was going to pick up more, but obviously... Obviously not. Yeah, not enough people used that back touch pad, but it was mm -hmm. kind of cool. I think Huck's right on the money with that uh, amazing use of a back touch pad. And it, it is one of the toughest things to get right in sports games. Well done. <laughs> uh, my number five is the Sega Genesis. Oh, we're Hello. getting the systems uh, demoed right in front of us here. Handy, yeah, except for a couple I won't have on me right here but uh you can see the dust coming off of it how <laughs> <laughs> uh gonna start coughing and sneezing pretty soon but i mean it really i had a nintendo the reason why i put genesis over nes on my list is and it's the reason i almost put sega saturn but did not where at the time i probably thought nintendo and like everything nintendo was better Although I, watching Console Wars, it was interesting how I'm assuming I was influenced by marketing or influenced by friends who were influenced by marketing is probably more likely. Mm -hmm. uh, but I mean, at some point, you just have to give in. Like, I had a Genesis to start because I loved Sonic the Hedgehog. I thought it was the greatest. Uh, in retrospect, looking back on it now, and it's funny watching Console Wars talking about like the graphics and colors between the two because Sonic the Hedgehog is probably a 6.5 or a 7, and Super Mario World is a 10. So I completely yeah, am on board I'm, with it. I'm glad you came around to that fact. <laughs> no, but I mean, I mean, we, we talk about the force feed and movies and rationalizing stuff, but I was like that, and one of my friends who's listening right now, you know who you are, was certainly doing the same thing. Uh, and we would, you know, just eventually, finally, once I came around, Nintendo was clearly superior in every way that, you know, we would just make fun of them saying every Genesis game is purple and <laughs> became this <laughs> running joke that we loved. Uh, but looking back on the Genesis now, I, I really do see some amazing things about it. And along with the Saturn, I think there are some really interesting, if not, you know, library quality level games like you'd put in in the in the history books but a lot of interesting ips and games that weren't that popular that now i go back and revisit or think of like look at as an adult i'm like that game's actually pretty cool and i probably just wasn't old enough or have played enough games to fully appreciate them 
So I, I do think it is a pretty awesome controller. I do like, even though the games are not great, the modularity with Sega CD and 32X, which also have heavy nostalgic vibes for me. And, you know, it's really the first, I, I moved from NES to that. And I feel like I got into NES pretty late comparatively, maybe not, but Genesis felt like the first time I decided I want this console rather than it was just a Christmas present that everyone got almost with the NES. So uh, definitely has a special place in my heart and you know, it's my number five console of all time. And I, I would say it's, I played Sonic the Hedgehog every day. I, it, that is a very formative game for me in terms of starting to love video games. And Sonic Tuesday was for real. The first magazine I ever bought, I think was the Sonic 2 EGM. And I mean, it all started there. Sonic 2 was huge. Chemical Plant Zone, the best video game song of all time. I must say, I had to, Genesis was my first console I ever owned. And so I thought it was going to be on my list, but it's not. Spoiler alert. And really for me, it did come down to the games, I think. I liked the modularity, but I never had a 32X. I never had a Sega CD. I had the original, you know, chunky genesis that if you try to buy the sega cd it didn't actually fit on the stand with it oh you just uh, need the adapter oh, okay yeah i had that one that <laughs> chunky version uh but i must say though still there are games like there are a few really like frank was saying just gems on this game now i i wouldn't hold sonic as high as frank does but i was more just for the record to, like 11 year old frank held it in high esteem 12 year old <laughs> okay 40 year old Frank recognize it, recognizes it as the overrated piece of shit. That <laughs> <laughs> okay. But I mean, I still go back and I play, you know, uh, fantasy star Four, the Sh shiny force one and two streets of rage. Uh, even like the old NHL games, like 94 and stuff are still That's classics. Uh, and like games like that really are amazing. Uh, and I just, but they just weren't enough to to push it over for me, even though I had the nostalgia of it being like my first real console that I ever had. But I also love that, love that system as well. And I guess- now, I never owned a Genesis for the record. So it's not on my list. Mm. Actually, I own one now to be fair, but- <laughs> <laughs> The Mini? No, I just, uh, actually... somebody gave me a Genesis over the years and they have one in a box somewhere, but- Good luck trying to actually plug it in without some crazy adapters, though. Like <laughs> I think I got about 3,000. <laughs> <laughs> uh, okay. Uh, I guess I'm on to number four, which is the original PlayStation. Uh, basically, for me, this one came down to all the really memorable RPGs that are on this system. And it started pushing to 3D, but I don't think it really nailed it as well as the N64 basically a lot of the 3D games on this are clunkers like Dwyer was saying before like they are really hard to go back to like Tomb Raider I bet is completely unplayable now and but there are also a lot of really amazing series that kicked off on this platform so like Resident Evil like classic classic Resident Evil Tomb Raider uh, and then there's some other other games Metal like Gear Metal Solid. Gear yeah Metal yeah. Gear Solid Symphony of the Night like legendary games, Final Fantasy 7, 8, and 9. Gran Turismo, I think, started here. Mm -hmm. Sukaden 1 and 2. Uh, and then some other, like, Did you more... say Crash Bandicoot? I didn't because I think that game is shit, but, you know, yeah. you can say that if you want. <laughs> no, I'm just in the fact that it orig the series originated there. Yeah, and just like a ton... And then, like, there's other RPGs that are less, I guess, well-known, like Vagrant Story, Parasite Eve, Valkyrie Profile, Grandia... There's like a whole bunch of others that I just really enjoy. And, and I don't think any other system really has that many RPGs that came out on one platform at, at this period of time. And, and that's why it's my number four. Nice. Another system I never owned. <laughs> uh, but my number four is kind of an obvious one. But I was debating whether to put it on the list, to be honest with you. It is the original NES. And... I mean, the reason I would debate it is just because I feel a lot of these games, 
there's huge nostalgia there, but you go back and you try to play them and you get 10 minutes in and you're like, okay, I'm done. Like they're just, they're, they're really hard. They're just, I don't know. There's always something that's that you bounce off of with a lot of these games, but you know, the Mario games are still classics. And I mean, this is kind of aside from the Commodore 64 where it all, all started for me. So uh, you gotta, you gotta give that credit to Nintendo, I think for, for really uh, bringing us to where we are today. Well, you don't got it. It's not on my list. I don't. It's on my list. <laughs> uh, not on mine either. <laughs> but um, I respect the nostalgia, know, but that's about it. You don't have to give the first movie a spot on your list. The first movie that was ever made because it started movies. It's just not the way it works. And if you were, you'd put Atari or something else or Pong on there. Any. Uh, <laughs> uh, it's cool that it's nostalgic. I, I'm down. With well, I mean, it's I, also I, I just almost, a, it's also just a system that I I probably played more than any other. Yes, I, I so. do. I'm just fucking with you, Sean. But uh, legit, best you're, game you're really for not. Really not. for NES, most playable game from NES today. What is it? You tell me. I'd say you got two options. Metroid? Absolutely not. One of the least playable games. <laughs> <laughs> I guess there's no map. That's definitely... <laughs> Uh, well, there, it, it is, but like everything looks the same. It's so hard to tell the difference between areas. It's it's nineteen forty two. I think it's obvious. Like best, most playable game still today from that console. Bad dudes. Mega Man two. Mega Man two. Sean oh. got it. Nailed it. Number one, hands down. I mean, it's hard, but it's not that hard. Mega Man two is a joke. Anyway. <laughs> Uh, okay. And the other option I would say is Super Mario Brothers 3. Mm -hmm. Those two for sure. Undeniable classics. Uh, my number four is the Xbox 360. Mm. Even though by the end of this console generation, I probably played PlayStation 3 more and liked a lot of the series that PlayStation 3 started, I got to give respect to the Xbox 360 for really the first huge jump forward in the, the ex user experience at home, whether it's Xbox Live, achievements, friends lists, all of that stuff. It felt like a game changer. It feels like it was really pushing things. Obviously, we've debated and discussed my um, addiction in OCD when it comes to trophies, which really is just ripping off achievements, which I need to give credit to. And it really changed the way I play games. I never played games on hard difficulty before this system. And it really like opened me up to the finer points of game design and understanding it, which was also related to probably starting at a games company when this console came out. So uh, I, I think it was a very influential console in my life. I could jump in here because it's also my number three, which I actually was surprised it was on your list. I thought I would be the only one with this on my list, but my main points were the achievements and also uh, the XBLA, which Ooh. I don't really think gets yes, enough credit. Wars. Good call. Well, Geometry Wars, Limbo, Braid, like all these games that started being possible that basically microsoft opened the market to smaller developers like before this time you had to have like a publisher or you could not even get on the system like it was a totally different beast and they started opening it up to smaller companies and indies that just wasn't possible before unless you were like releasing for free on pc or something like that uh and like just some really again amazing games on this system you had like my one of my favorite of all time mass effect on it you had Halo Reach, which is probably the best Halo game. Gears started here, and Gears 2, Gears 3. Uh, Fable 2, I think, came out on this. I, don't, I think the original Fable was Xbox, but Fable 2, which is one of the better ones. And so I think, like, there's obviously a ton of crossover with, would this be PS3 at the same time? Mm -hmm. I think so, yeah. right? Yeah, so there's a ton of crossover games with PS3. But, I mean, just the XBLA, uh, like, just so many good games and the achievements. Yeah, I'm reg I, I forgot about the influence of the arcade and the first time I played. Well, it wasn't the first time I played Geometry Wars, but that's the game I played the most when the console came out. It was Zuma. 
Zuma's Revenge? Oh, <laughs> Hexic. Wasn't Hexic the launch game on the HDD? Yeah, I think launch so. Game? And also the HD, this was the first kind of consoles to start pushing the HD output, which mm -hmm. was, I mean, not it was going to happen, but it, this was kind of the first ones to have it. Nice. Yep. Great console. All right, my number three is the PlayStation 4. Mm. Believe it or not, which... Uh, I believe it. I believe it. <laughs> I mean, it's... I I think there's a lot of stuff going for the, the PS4, and I think the, the, the UI, the overall experience is great. I think there's a lot of great games from this generation, a lot of amazing exclusive games this generation, which we've talked about a lot. Um, I include the PSVR as part of that ecosystem, which... I, I love you. that they brought it to uh, to a home console, and you know you've also got the. You can play uh, it from your Vita. Your number Vita five. integration. Oh, yep. <laughs> I mean, yeah. There's a lot of it's cool amazing. stuff about the PS4, but I think ultimately it is mostly the games. And uh, I mean, granted, a lot of the series started on the PS3, like Uncharted and God of War and stuff like that. But they the the versions that are on the PS4, I think, are great as well. So. Yes. Sorry. No one has mentioned PlayStation 3 yet, right? No. That's nope. correct. I wish I would have put it on. I did love it, but yeah, I just got to be honest about this list. Uh, my number three is the Nintendo 64 for basically all of the reasons Huck said. I think it's phenomenal. It still holds up as a great console, even though, you know, some games are tough to play. GoldenEye being number one, which is, I played probably the most i'm sure i'm not alone in having those memories playing that game back in the day but uh it's borderline unplayable now but changed the way i played games i agree with everything huck said his um synopsis of why it was an amazing console was spot on and again to reiterate what sean said about uh the playstation 4 it just had great games that's really what these consoles except for maybe the Xbox 360. I think overall, I like the PlayStation 3's games better, looking back on it. But my top three consoles, it's all about the games. We love that line uh, <laughs> at E3 press conferences, and that's what ultimately my favorite consoles come down to. Now, it would have been a different list. We didn't really talk about this, but if we took games out of the equation, like just functionality of console, controller, everything about it you know when we got a juice again we'll go to that list. <laughs> well i was i was also gonna I, ask I, if i can tell you what my number one would be if that was the case vita obviously no it's <laughs> gamecube all the way gamecube like well i was just gonna ask if the design like, of the actual oh, that's, system that's all we're figures talking into about, it really okay you're not talking about like i i don't know i think you could get a lot more out of the modern day consoles than than that no we're just talking about like the look of the console maybe the user experience the not controller. functionality not the fact that you no. have a stupid fucking disc that doesn't do anything <laughs> oh, else that, that's i love that about it like, <laughs> i love the gamecube it's not on my list though because the game there was just not enough great games on that system but um anyway that's a different list yeah, I yeah. want to go off on one tangent too. You, you cool. mentioned Goldeneye, all your Goldeneye playing. And I must say that one thing I love about Goldeneye, there it is. Oh, look at that. <laughs> Model it. Uh, that still doesn't get enough cred is how they had different level. They... I don't see that. <laughs> the old expansion pack. <laughs> I remember that. Rogue Squadron, mandatory. Uh, but Goldeneye had based on your difficulty level, different achievements in each area. And I thought that was so cool. And that is, has really never been duplicated anywhere else. That is like the definition of, of asking the player to replay the game. And you, you know, you have all the difficulty levels you start unlocking and then all of a sudden you're like, Oh, I guess I'll, that was pretty easy. I'll, I'll start over on the next one. And then all of a sudden there's new shit to do. Like, get out of here. Like, what better way to entice people to keep coming back for every difficulty level than that? Like, I don't know. It seems crazy that that, that other games haven't taken that up. And 
That's what one achievements day, are, bud. One day. If you love it so much, you should agree with my use of trophy guides and achievements. <laughs> it's like I said, seeing everything a game has to offer. That's what achievements are now. Yeah, that's true. That's true. Uh, where That was your number three? three? Yeah. Okay, my number two is the PS4 as well as, Dw as Dwyer would say it is number, his number three. And basically the same thing. I feel like the PS4, just the games that came out on the PS4, they just started to master storytelling and master like the systems and just how much game companies are able to make these incredible games and all the, you know, all the uh, new stuff that came out too, like, uh, you know, just Ghost of Shishima came out, Last of Us Part Two. Final Fantasy VII Remake, like all these just incredible, oh, God of War, like Horizon. The list goes on and on with PS4. There is just so many. You guys aren't even into Neo. Neo? <laughs> I don't even <laughs> have Neo on my list. Like, I've got Uncharted 4, uh, Spider-Man, The Order 1886. Who could ever forget that gem? <laughs> uh, Killzone Shadowfall. Like, just all these incredible, incredible titles. And yeah, I didn't mention Neo. I didn't mention Bloodborne, which I know people love just so many exclusives that are actually incredible that there's that many on the system. Yeah, and it's almost all... like it should be your number one console of all time. Well, I know, but it's just so they're all of them are just so high bar, all of them. And I'll, yeah, maybe, maybe my number one will surprise you then when, when we get, maybe to it's because... like, mm. no wonder PlayStation is dominating and is going to continue <laughs> to dominate in the future. They have every good game franchise. Well, there's no yes. question they dominated this generation for sure. Oh, yeah. Uh, my number two, you guys already mentioned, Xbox 360. Not too much more to add, except I don't know if you guys mentioned the controller specifically, but no. up to that point, it was definitely my favorite controller. I don't know, this generation ones maybe refine it even a little bit more, but just the feel of it with the dual analog sticks, I mean, uh, it, it was great. And uh, yeah, as you guys have already said, the the overall package of the experience of online play and building a community and Xbox Live Arcade was huge because up until that point, the only way that you could play sort of smaller 2D style games was on the DS or something like that. So, you know, because consoles up to that point was always just about like the biggest and best graphics. We are not interested in, I mean, I guess Nintendo was still dabbling in, uh, more, it's more about gameplay, but, um, yeah, that, that changed everything. So that's my number two. Great console, Sean. Uh, my number two is <laughs> the Super Nintendo Entertainment System. You lied to us in the pregame. You uh, lied. I, it was my number one console up until, I don't know, an hour before doing the show. And <laughs> I, you'll see why I changed it. But, you know. Well, one reason might be just because of the discoloration that happened. <laughs> <laughs> like that is enough to bump it down in my opinion. Took a little trip through the retro the, lounge and something else caught your color, eye. Uh, with different types of plastic on this console really like tarnished the legacy. Uh, sorry for the <laughs> wordplay there, but it's undeniable. But I mean, at some point, you know, halfway through that, basically when Donkey Kong Country came out, you know, I ultimately in my heart, uh, when my friend had Super Mario World and a Super Nintendo and I would go there and want to play it constantly, even though I had a Genesis, I knew like, okay, Frank, just admit it. Like, it's better. <laughs> you know it is. It's so sad. I know you're jealous. I know you want it. You got a Genesis. Life sucks. Uh, <laughs> get used to it. That's the way it's going to go forever. Um. And I realized that and I'm like, they make the best games. It's the best. And then you look back and then you finally get a Super Nintendo with Donkey Kong Country and you're like, finally, I've made it. I've done it. <laughs> I'm where I want to be. I'm where I need to be. And you just, Donkey Kong Country, Super Metroid, Mario World, um, Mega Man X. Oh, ooh la la. The list goes on and on. And it just has the best games. The, the look of the games holds up incredibly, in my opinion. Like that, the era of 16-bit is still gorgeous and to the point where it's basically being replicated by 50% of indie games. Um, the color palette, 
the controller is phenomenal. It, mm. it basically was as good, almost as good as it gets. I Especially must say, for cartridge-based consoles, yeah, nothing yeah. comes close. I must say, I struggled with this one. I had to drop the SNES off my list. It's probably sitting at number six for me right now. Final Fantasy and- three. I know, I know. Lots of RPGs on there, I lots cried. of RPGs. You I know, I cried. I cried, I cried. I cried before the show that I took it off. Well, that but should yeah, tell you the, something. Did you? The RPGs, the sprite graphics, everything you said, like there's, this console has some of the highest highs of video games. Like Chrono Trigger, the Final Fantasy games, Super Metroid, you said, Link to the Past. Uh, yeah, uh, what else? Secret of Man. The garbage titles are great. Uniracers. Fuck, I love Uniracers. But I, I, I don't know. I, but that's where I kind of fell off. That's why it fell off for me. I found like the top 10 games are the cream of the crop, like top, top, top games. But then after that, I don't know if I really loved anything else it had to offer. Like the games I played were, you know, like Contra was okay. Uh, Uniracers. Hey, no. Let me just even the trashier ones, and I, I hesitate to call them trash, but like the entire Super Star Wars trilogy. Um I didn't really like those games. They were way too hard. And like uh, Castlevania games, same thing. Oh, like I know all these like legend Super games started here. Or uh I'm, I just had another one that's I mean the whole Donkey Kong Country series is amazing. Um what about like and I never I really mean, got a Donkey Earth Kong and like like rpgs like uh, how how are there not like more than 10 rpgs that you love on this system well there might be i mean like breath of fire breath of fire 2 there's a lot of good rpgs but i find illusion of gaia i you know what i love playing those games but i wouldn't say they're top flight rpgs i would say i would say (laughs) like secret of mana is very poorly balanced the gameplay is is awesome, but the game is not very well balanced. And that, especially if you do the original without well, any other. Well, tell me how un- unbalanced it is when you're grinding for for your life in in uh, Fantasy Star Four, bud. Come on. That's why Genesis is not on my list. Oh, okay, good point. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> I love that game. I love that game, but it's not enough to make it top. Like right, some okay. of like kind of the same idea like there are some amazing games on both genesis and snes but it just fell off because it just doesn't have the the depth of quality well now i'm really wondering what his number one is it's gonna be a surprise i guess it's my turn to go unless you want to say something about the snes which you probably will i'll just wait i'll get to it in a minute (laughs) (laughs) but my number one which i guess is a surprise is the ps3 and hmm. And I feel like the PS, <laughs> the PS3, after I looked at it, it really like not only revolutionized like the action adventure style of game, but it also mastered 3D. Like I feel in, even in the PS2 era, 3D games were pretty clunky. We we're just trying to get the hold of the analog, the two analog sticks. But with PS3 and the Xbox 360 generation, uh we just started mastering 3d how the controls are supposed to feel and i feel the ps3 had the exclusives to put it way above the xbox 360 and even the ps4 uh you know you got you got games that that frank loves like infamous that no Mm -hmm. one should like but somehow frank loves these games but then you got (laughs) uh, the obvious choice uncharted you got uncharted one two and three and i wanted to include the playstation 3 just so i could pull my just so I could tell my story again that at Silicon Knights, I was the only person there who bought a PS3. And the you reason were. why Xbox 360 is on Sean's list is because everyone got one for free. Probably the only <laughs> console he didn't pay for. That's why he loves it so much. <laughs> and I would walk around the office saying, why does no one have a PS3? Uncharted, Resistance. These Resistance. games need to be played. Yes. I was the one saying Uncharted is the game that is going to change video games. Everyone's like, I'm playing Xbox 360, Gears of War, blah, blah, blah. I was probably one of your first converts, though. I know. And <laughs> so you can vouch that I was telling this to oh, everyone. I, I was oh, walking, peeking, peeking over the cubicle. You gotta get the S3, bud. <laughs> <laughs> you gotta play Uncharted. Even so back then, it was, uh, it was Sony Paola for Frank. Basically oh, yeah. where this podcast started, right there on the spot. 
Uh, but I mean, I, I was not being more. paid. It was the opposite. It was a <laughs> bleeding dryola because it cost seven hundred dollars. It was no <laughs> joke. Yeah, but I mean, like Last of Us, uh, God Metal of War, Gear Solid three. Four, Hello, Metal Gear Solid Four, Kill Zone Two and Three, uh, Limbo. I th- was Limbo exclusives. I'm not sure. No, it wasn't. Uh, what else do they have? I mean, they had a lot of other games. Really? That I think were Cross Jet Journey. Journey's one for a smaller game. But also, I have memories of it being sort of like the rock band machine, which kind of drove it like a lot of play. Uh, Valkyria Chronicles, of course, the oh, best game is. on the console. The South Park RPGs were on it. Tomb Raider rebooted at this generation. Uh, Heavy Rain, one of my personal favorites. I Dead got a few Space. More for you, was... bud. Yeah, go for yeah. it. Um, Dishonored, LA Noir, Little Big XCOM, Planet, Enemy. one and two. Yeah. Uh, there's probably some shitty Ratchet and Clank games you're going to talk about here. God of War 3 is huge. Yeah, I said that. I Did said you? That one. Well, I apologize. Yep. The Assassin's um, Creed games kind of really like picked off and picked I mean, up those in this generation. Those were all on Xbox too. I can't no, I know, but still this generation, I understand they're not exclusive, but this generation is when, like I'm taking it to the whole. I get you. So you might even it. say back in that generation, all things being equal, Sony had the way better games, making it your number one console of all time. And That's right. That's since why that point one. forward, Sony's lineup has only gotten better and better and better and added more exclusive games. Yet you think it's going to be close in the next generation? Don't think so. <laughs> it's, the gap has just been widening and widening. It's, um, you're, I think you're, you're mistaking my close to... Uh, like sales or something. I think at the right at the start, I think they're both going to sell well. I think I think Sony will definitely outsell them long term. But I think at the beginning, when supply is limited, it'll be close. No, all right, fine, whatever. Well, I mean, yeah, if there's only a limited supply. Fuck you. Yeah, yeah. Well, that's not what we're debating. Anyway, I don't okay. want to go back to the con. All right, for that. maybe we should create another debacle. <laughs> <laughs> Sean. Anyways, that's it. Okay, yeah, uh, good choice. I mean, it's interesting because when I think of PS4, as I said, like I mentioned some of the games, but yeah, a lot of them, a lot of the series started on the PS3. So, I mean, I'm kind of, I think, Frank, you said you played 360 a lot to start, but then switched over to PS3 later in that generation. That was probably the same. But um, my number one is SNES, which, uh, I mean, it's just... I, I think they mode perfected six. mode six hasn't come up yet. <laughs> Love mode six. Uh, <laughs> just, I mean the, I think they perfected the 2d games and you know, they're still playable. A lot of these, when you go back to them, they're still great. Um, you know, obviously super Wait. Metroid link to the past are like two of my greatest games of all time. Mario Kart probably played that more than any game ever in existence. Um, you, I, I, I actually I'm checking mode six. No, it is not mode six. Why do you keep calling it mode six? What are you talking about? What is six? it? It's mode, mode seven. seven. It's oh, I super, super scope I, six. Yeah, same I thing. I thought last time I called it mode seven and you corrected no, me. No, last time you called it mode six again. <laughs> I was like, what are you talking about? This mode six. Oh my it's god, the mode seven. That's like the I love it so, graphic thing. So much, I don't even know the name. Now is mode seven just like blast processing, where it's just a buzzword, or no, is it mode actually seven is a real thing, bud? Yeah. <laughs> okay. It's like that special. I mean, like, Star Star Fox, stuff. another yeah. game on SNES. Yeah, Polly. It was like full Super 3D. FX chip. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um. Obviously, yeah, the marketing I'm, didn't work very well. Couldn't remember that. I guess not. Yeah. But uh, yeah, I mean, I, I play like I play a ton of the sports games on SNES too. Like, I mean, you guys associate the NHL games and stuff more with the Genesis, I guess, but. I played mm-hmm. them all on SNES. So. That you know, that feels to me like whatever you play. Someone who didn't have a Genesis. The mo- the mm-hmm. most on you have the fondest memories. Like I have to admit, they're pretty close in experience. The NHL game specifically, um, but I mean, the real thing was Mortal Kombat too. Mm, Whereas yeah. Mortal Kombat One obviously was better on Genesis. Mortal Kombat 2, it wasn't even close. Once you had the blood code in Super Nintendo, it was an infinitely better experience on Super Nintendo. And I got to say, I'm not a fan of the Genesis controller, but I think the SNES controller is is very good. Like, you know, was it the first one to have the shoulder buttons or was there another one? 
I believe it was the first. Yeah. So I had many was, a blister on both. You know what, Sean? Let's be honest. Shoulder buttons on this SNES, vastly overrated. Barely used. They kind of – Barely used at the time, but now they're huge. So, I mean, yeah, I agree, but ahead of his time. On the Super Nintendo itself, they were kind of shit. <laughs> mm-hmm. Look at this guy talking down his number two console of all time. I, I'm just, you know, I don't care. I was fine with the four buttons, but anytime I had to use shoulder buttons, like for the spin jump in Mario World or aiming at 45 degrees in Super Metroid, really wasn't crazy about it. And I'm still not. There, I said it. Shoulder buttons <laughs> suck. I'm trying to remember Triggers? what I, what Where I ever that? used the shoulder buttons for. Didn't it, was, couldn't you dive in NHL with the shoulder button? That was huge. Holly. <laughs> Okay, my number one console of all time. And, I mean, really, Sean basically said it was his number one. So did Huck, but whatever. Uh, When they really talk about how amazing the games are for it, it's not even close. And I didn't even mean to. I'm wearing PlayStation Blue today. So, Sean, he probably did know. You don't have your mood lighting (laughs) on. Oh, my. I forgot to set up my MS Paint. Uh, (laughs) It was close, but... I had to switch today. In my when I when we talked about this, my initial reaction was, "Oh, it's easy, Super Nintendo, not even close." But the more and more I thought about it, it's PlayStation Four, one hundred percent. To me, the best user interface of any console ever. Although the I, I didn't bring it up, I should have during PlayStation Three. The cross media bar was amazing. Like it is very handy. That actually might be better than PlayStation 4, but uh, especially now they added the folders with Xbox. When they update the the user interface and stuff like that, it gets so clunky sometimes and unresponsive. And I never have that with PlayStation 4. Anything I want to do and need to do is so easily accessible for me, um, which is a huge part of these next gen consoles and the games like. You talked about the exclusives already, Huck. All of my favorite games. The games that, like, Horizon is probably my favorite game of all time. Um, All the exclusives you mentioned. It is my favorite controller of all time. Like, I have weird hands. I have small hands. I'm going to hide them before people start commenting on how weird my hands are. Uh, (laughs) But... um, I It fits my hands perfectly. That's why I have nine DualShock 4s. In my house, I love that controller. My Are you sure it's not because the batteries die on you? No. I've, I had, I've had to throw out like three or four. I oh, love really? the, uh, the touchpad as like a one big button for accessing maps and stuff like that. I think it's fantastic. I like subtly, I'm a fan of the, the light on the controller. I like that. And I also really like the microphone even though that kind of started with the Wii, but I, I think when used, it's really cool. I wish games used it more. There was a recent game that used it again, and I thought it was really cool the way they used it. I can't remember which one, though. Uh, but also VR. I, I mean, that's the first time I got into VR. It was affordable and entertaining. Uh, not even close, the more I think about it. PlayStation 4, the greatest console of all time. Hmm. Interesting that none of us had PS2, because I know uh, what if you do a quick look online, a lot of people have that up there pretty high. I, like looks were not a factor here, but I do really hate the look of every iteration of the PS2. I think so. I think it looks like trash. Uh, I I didn't love games on that console. I would play yeah, more GameCube and Xbox. Like, there was like tons of games, but as a result, it was a lot of crap too. Shadow I of think, the Colossus, right? but I God of War like, two, God of War one and two are both. Uh, Metal Gear ones. Solid two and three. Yeah, get, I mean they're they're not as good as the first one though. Um, what was the other? Dark uh, Cloud, Bully. Yeah, like those are GTA's, but those Okami. are multi-platform. I I don't know. It just it didn't blow me away. And I, I don't remember that being the definitive console of its generation for me. So I know it sold a lot, but. And for me, it didn't have really like blockbuster RPGs like Final Fantasy 10 and Final Fantasy 12. I don't really like that much. 
So Jack and Daxter, I loved Sly Cooper and Ratchet and Clank. Although going back to Ratchet and Clank, it's the worst. I, I will not say that for Jack and Daxter. The first Jack and Daxter is still one of the best platformers of all time. Uh, but yeah, PlayStation 4, it is phenomenal. I actually think when they drop, if they drop the price when PlayStation 5 comes out, I think that's going to sell a ton next year with all the exclusives. Yeah, could for sure. I wouldn't be surprised if they do like a PlayStation 4 slim or small, like a really small profile version of that console. It's got amazing games on it. So I was just normally when I go to Metacritic, like top games for a platform, usually like in the top 10, there's at least a couple exclusives. But for the PS2, it's pretty light. Like Tony Hawk Pro Skater 3, Grand Theft Auto 3, Resident Evil 4, Metal Gear Solid 2 is on here, but then it's San Andreas, Vice City, Gran Turismo. Then it's like Madden, Pro, Pro Skater 4, Devil May Cry, another Madden, another Madden. Yeah. Uh, I was going to say Metal Devil Gear May Cry 3. 4. I think, or no, yeah. sorry, not 4, but Devil May Cry, I remember being a big deal, although the sequels, I was not crazy. But I mean, that that's what I remember that console for, ruining sequels for games. Like, and this is, I, I ultimately blame gta for this where the games were good and then gta got popular and then every game had to be uh open, open world, world. and yeah. it was the worst they ruined all these game franchises by just being obsessed with making stuff open world and it, yeah i'm, I'm it's looking like, at the top the 50. playstation 2 worst console of all time <laughs> well i'm looking at the top 50 and i would say half of them are sports related titles which is not a good thing now is that top selling or no this is top metacritic score Oh, okay. So it may not really be a great judge, but I mean, Shadow of the Colossus is number 40. So that's, you know, we, we did a little dancing around here, but I like where we ended up that the PlayStation 2 is the most overrated <laughs> console. <laughs> and maybe the worst console, not including like Ouya and 3DO and bullshit like that. Yeah. Like of the, of the major players, let's say, Sony, Nintendo, Microsoft, Sega. I think it's the worst one. Sega Master System? Mm, yeah, that's the worst one. <laughs> so how much? <laughs> Speaking of which, Console Wars doesn't even mention. It's like Sega came out of nowhere. Yeah, I know. That documentary. I mean, it's, it's okay. It really should have been like a 20-part series. Like, I haven't watched all that much of High Score. And... Maybe we'll skip talking about it because I'm talking about everything right now. Can we have one video game documentary without talking about E.T. the game for fuck's sakes? How many times do we have to cover this game? Get the fuck out of here. We know. We got it. Yeah. I, well, Pretty long yeah. time ago now, too. I have to admit, so I read the book that this was based on and I liked it. And it was it felt, from what I remember, a lot more focused just on Tom Kalinske's story. And it was just kind of that generation and that's what it was mostly about but the documentary they have to pull in all these other kind of key history moments for video games that we've heard about like so yeah. many times it becomes this all-encompassing video game documentary at the same time which we're here for the war we're here yeah. for the console war. <laughs> and that stuff's speed the best speed like of console insider war. stuff about how sega fucked up with the saturn i didn't know a lot of that stuff that was my favorite stuff I was just going to say, speak of the console war, how much shit are we going to get in by not having Switch as our number one oh, fuck, for everything? Not close. It's got all two... the Switch lovers. First of all, you ha when you're doing a list like this, you have to uh, basically count all the Wii U games as Wii U console stuff. You can't just start including all this stuff that now is released. Oh, that twice. they're releasing now, yeah. Yeah. I mean, there's two amazing games on the console, really. Let's be honest. Switch would be in my top 10, but not top five. Ten. There's only been 10 consoles, Brick. Uh, <laughs> Sean, you got to, I know I'm getting on the Tim Rogers Doom review again, but and <laughs> Huck for sure. He references this book in the review. You guys have to read Masters of Doom. I've read hey, it. I read that book 15 years ago. <laughs> okay, just checking. <laughs> Maybe you should read it. I'm not reading. I'm out on You not read it? Oh, it's amazing. You got to read it. No. Nah. This guy, listen to him, talking shit to us. Get the audiobook, man. Is there an audiobook <laughs> version? 
I'm sure there is. Yeah, uh, that's a good idea, actually. I might do that. Go to your library. Check it out. Anyway, I loved that list. It turned out amazing. I think I'm going to be perfectly honest. We fucking crushed it. We were amazing. <laughs> <laughs> Those are some amazing lists. I think everybody brought it really hard with their lists. And I think we should uh, give ourselves a round of applause. <laughs> Now, moving on. <laughs> fail. What a fail. <laughs> Get off. My, I'm the host of this show. Get off that fucking soundboard, bud. I'm, I'm a little rusty. What do you want from me? Hey, you're rusty. <laughs> Fuck. Okay. Um, are we touching on this new story? We're running a little long. I don't know if we even want to get into it. We could just well, talk about it briefly. So... Amazon announced Luna. Yes. Uh, it's streaming video game service. Uh, yeah. I, I barely scratched into this. I mean, I barely count it as news, really. Um, I don't care. Well, it's interesting, though, because we're t- we keep talking about the console wars and the console war between Sony and Microsoft, but there's this other console war that's heating up now between X cloud stadia and Luna for cloud gaming, which I, I mean, I, okay, let's be honest. Yep. There is no console war ultimately, and there is no streaming war. This technology will become a commodity within a year of someone else getting it right. Like we're limited by bandwidth. There's no, I don't know what, there's not going to be some revolution where someone's going to figure out how to do this. It's all technology based. I'm sure the solutions are out there. Once infrastructure supports it, I mean, it's going to take everyone else a year to catch up once it works. So it's still going to come down to the same thing um, streaming platforms are now, which is who's got the best content. So fast forward a year, as soon as someone has it, they're all going to have it. And once again, it's going to come down to, who has the best games. That's why I don't care about this stuff at all. Well, and I would say that right now it's looking like Xbox for me because uh, like, so Stadia, as far as I've read, is there's kind of like a base model of $6. I don't even know exactly what that really gets you. Maybe it gets you a couple games. And then there's like a plus version, which is more, which gets you, I don't know, let's say 70 games. But then there's talk of it going more, less like a Netflix model and more like a cable subscription where you basically subscribe to publishers. So there's going to be like a Ubisoft channel essentially that you subscribe to for some additional cost. And then you get the Ubisoft game. So it's not Stadia you're saying, no, this is for Luna. Oh, that's Stadia talked about that as well. Stadia is like, now I don't know what you were talking about. Dwy with that like choice, whatever thing for Stadia, but Stadia for me was like you pay to play and then you also have to pay to play again right like yeah no the the, so the thing i was talking about is just like a minor feature it was something that they announced originally with the stadia and they hadn't actually put it out until now but i think they put it out now because the luna also has it and all it is is like a feature for people if they're streaming a game online they can put essentially like a live poll up to their viewers and say what do you want me to do next in the game and people can vote on it and it like somehow I don't know if it's integrated right into the game or how it works, but you know, you pick what you want the person to do next or what you want them to say next or something. That just just sounds like standard Twitch integration. Yeah. 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 But uh, the thing is, so this, the difference, I guess Stadia currently has, they're they're trying to sell individual games to you still for the most part, right? Like there's the pro subscription thing, which is like, every month they give you a a few new free games. It's kind of like PlayStation plus where you claim them and then they are part of your library, but mostly they're trying to sell you single games. Whereas Luna is kind of going more like Microsoft where they have a rotating group of like, I think they're launching with like 70 games. I think it is, but I looked at the list and it's mostly actually a lot of stuff that's already on game pass or on X cloud. So it's kind of, I mean, it's not PlayStation uh, now. Yeah, there's not a ton of new exclusive stuff there. But the one thing that is interesting about the Luna, and I don't know if uh, Microsoft or Google is going to do this, but you can play it on iOS through the Safari browser. 
So they found a way around this whole. That was always the case. Like you can play Stadia on a Mac on Safari browser, like anything that works on a browser. I, I don't think you can play Stadia on a, a mobile Safari browser. I don't think, I could be wrong, but I feel like I tried it and it didn't work. Hmm. Or maybe I was trying on Chrome because I would have assumed Chrome would work. Oh, that's a good point. I don't, yeah, maybe Safari doesn't even work at all with Stadia. Yeah, I'm not sure. But... Right about that. My, my apologies. So, I mean, that's the only kind of interesting thing. But, I mean, obviously Amazon's got a lot of money. They've been uh, trying to get into gaming for a while. They, they bought a few studios. They've had games in development. I don't really know what's happened with all that. Like well, they also to... own Twitch, so they'll be able to push this out right. through all their Twitch people and and try to market it that way, which could help them quite a bit because Google has like no entry into the gamer marketplace, as far as I can tell, other than you know Google searches. I had no idea Twitch was owned by Amazon. Yeah, they bought it like five years ago or something like that. Oh, crazy! Yeah, so I mean, they have some resources and things they can draw from but it is right now feeling like not much different from, from stadia i can't really see it catching on but now one one thing that's kind of interesting somebody on twitter and i i forget who it was i apologize but somebody was asking you know is frank into stadia because he's usually an early adopter to all this stuff and you did early adopt into stadia but you're not too interested in Luna. So what's up with that, Frank? Well, I, it seems like just a more limited version. And didn't come with a free Chromecast. So yeah, maybe I'll get one. I mean, whatever. I'm always curious about this stuff, but there was nothing exclusive about the experience. And I guess if I liked <laughs> Stadia and I was like, well, maybe the streaming, ver like the subscription model might be interesting. I just, I don't think the technology is there yet and I don't do it with Stadia. I just did it. Like you said, I got the controller in 4k and I'm like, why not? Even though I'm still play paying for pro to claim all these free games, they set their hooks in and I'm not letting go. Uh, but I want to like it. Believe me, I can't wait until this is the case of get for games when the technology works, but I just don't know when that's going to be. So did they say when this launches? I have no idea. Uh, hmm. Looks like know. this month. I don't know if there's an exact date yet. But, yeah, I mean, it's one of those things, if there's a free trial, I might try it out. But uh, just looking at the lineup. Free trials, bud. You love these things. So, oh, you know, says... it's for the show, for the show. <laughs> <laughs> here, here it says, yeah, you need at least 30 megabits per second for 4k gaming and i don't know it doesn't seem to mention what you need for just regular hd but i think i think uh stadia was 25 right does that sound right mm, I don't anyone remember now. No. what sorry what was 25 megabit down for uh, to have I it think so. run hd i think so yeah yeah and for, i i don't know 4K, I, I, was, I think it was 50 50 Okay, so 35 Before is quite a bit better. Yeah, I know a lot of people were saying, oh, Amazon's got the web services. But I mean, Google has the Google Cloud. It's pretty much going to be the same thing, if not bigger. Uh, so I don't know if that's really a big plus for the Amazon uh, Luna compared to the Google Stadia. I think they're both going to have great backend technology. And I would say Microsoft's actually behind in that with Azure or Azure, however you say it. Uh, mm -hmm. But I still think a lot of people use Azure. So I don't think their technology is really lagging that far behind, if anything. So I don't know. It's There's a lot behind the scenes that we have no idea about. Yeah. I mean, it's, it's another interesting wrinkle to uh, everything that's going on right now with mm -hmm. video games, but... Uh, definitely not really moving my needle, I have to admit. Same. Everything moves yeah. Frank's needle, though, so. Not this one. 
not this one. <laughs> um, so I, we've been running pretty long. I think I'm going to shut her down right now. Okay. And, uh, okay. We'll get into some more stuff we played next week. I will say I've started Animal Crossing New Horizons. And Uh-oh. Oh. Every day. Um, been seeing Frank on there playing it, so uh, he's he's not lying. I never lie, Sean. <laughs> Uh, all right. Thanks for joining us. All right. We will see you next week. Check out youtube.com forward slash game junk. If you want to see some dust on some consoles, <laughs> kissing them and other things, be sure to check. Uh, other than that, thanks for listening and we'll see you next week. So SNES is on your guys' list, yes? Somewhere? I'm telling you, I'm telling you right now, it's number one on both of our lists. <laughs> <laughs> okay. 100%. I'm, I mean, I obviously know my list, and I'm pretty sure it's number one on Sean's. And if it isn't, he's fucking lying. Unless he okay. includes Commodore 64. That's the only way. And I don't think it should count. Oh, we'll get into it. <laughs> a new a mug. Great double, great double drink there. Was that an? Was that like a little tease? The mug was that intentional? No. I'm, oh. what, you never seen this before? No. Oh yeah. <laughs> had this for a long time. I mean, is that? That's not officially Nintendo. Like the color green is way off. Well, it's kind of faded now, but it's definitely not official. Okay.